Hey guys, welcome to uh, my tutorial. I'm Doppler Hawk, and let me just give you a brief description about me here, or uh, you know, a bi biography about myself. Um, I've been uh, modeling for several years, um, and uh, one of my expertise is ARMA 3. Now you probably never heard of me. I'm actually part of CRFT Gaming and also the lead modeler at Singularity RP. Um, anyways, let's get started. So if you look on my Steam, I have a workshop. Now let me a go channel workshop, has been edited. And you'll see this workshop right here. A channel has been edited. Open source. A channel has start. been edited. You can download it on Steam. Anyways, so what you'll get is a channel has been edited. A little folder like this. DHI police. Now you're probably wondering what this is. Um, you'll have to go to your Steam, go to tools. If you have Arma 3 installed, install your Arma 3 tools. And what you do is you play Arma 3 tools once it's installed. And then you mount P drive. And then once you mount the P drive, it'll ask you where to put it. You can go up here in preferences. And it'll ask you where to put your P drive. Mine's here. And where's your Arma 3 at? And so and so. And if you have Poseidon tools or whatever, it's up to you. Anyways, you'll get this folder. And what will be in here is with the police car. So let's get started. So once you open it up, after you have the Arma 3 tools installed, you get this little police car. I know what you're thinking. You're like, what is this? What is it? No, I didn't actually give you a real model. I gave you a model I modeled in Maya. See? Maya. And, oh, let me show you really quick. So let's say you have a lovely car you just modeled, right? And you want it export it into object builder. So what I'm going to do is right click my object builder because I already have it pinned. I'm going to open up a new session and minimize this. I have probably got an alt tab too. So if you hold alt tab you can switch you know whatever you want. Whatever you want to be in. Okay. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to export this from whatever 3D program you have. And I'm going to call it I already have it. So let's see test car. Right? Export selection. Okay, now we're done with Maya. Say bye bye, Maya. We're done. Don't save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now that we have that, let me go to my blank one and we're going to import that. So you can import 3DS files, text files, animation files, which I don't know how to do, object files, and then the one we used, FBX. So let's go on our desktop and go to test car. Has no animation, mesh, UV, there we go. So you're like, whoa, what's that? What's that? That's the, that's the object you just imported from Maya. Um, see, if you go to shaded mode, you can see it. And if you go to view, bulldozer, if you set up your configuration property and your Arma 3 tools, um, you get this. Now you're probably like wondering, why is it only one-sided? Because most of the time faces, planes are one-sided. But I'll teach you a secret. Um, if you go to view and projected, I like to go into face mode and we go hold shift and just hit our lock in our x axis x, <coughs> x axis and just drag it and make a duplicate. And then put it back on top and then hit W and voila. Now you got an inside view too. So when you look Hey, look at that. You got an inside view. Now you're probably wondering, well, okay, now where's the modeling? Okay, so that's basically what I did. Now, while we're in here, let me teach you stuff about how to apply textures. So let's go to our first thing. We have a QB we just imported from Maya, and we can select our little color palette. We can say green, hit OK, apply. And then you look and you view her, oh, it's green. And maybe run this. 
I could do this all day. You get the point. Now, um, now let's apply a texture. So we go in our folder and we go to our texture, which in this case, I'll teach you a secret. If you make a TGA, as long as you uh, make a TGA like this, let me open Photoshop real quick and show you. I have a plugin on Photoshop, which I think it's opening. Come on, don't embarrass me, Photoshop. Why? It's probably the viewer taking up most of the memory. Nope. All right, so let's see. Let's see, what is going on here? Process. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So, there we go. So we got Photoshop, right? And I'm not teaching you how to get Photoshop. Um, you can buy it. You can do. I'm not telling you anything. Get it wherever. Anyways, uh, once you get Photoshop or GIMP, GIMP's a really good program. I mean, you can look up GIMP. And it's free. And you can download it. It's a great tool to paint, like Photoshop. Uh, I'm using Photoshop in this case. So you're going to open your texture, and it's a TGA. So this is our texture. This is where our UVs get put on. UVs are coordinates of faces. Remember that. So when you create an ARMA uh, texture, you got to remember that there's got to be an alpha. If you make it black, what you're seeing here won't show up in game. It has to be white. So let's make this white. And you can do this by going to channels and make an alpha channel. And GIMP, same way, make an alpha channel. So anyways, once you do this, you got your TGA. And they have to be, armor textures have to be in twos. So 1,024, 2048, 4096, and so on and so on. I wouldn't make it that big because you're just going to cause a lot of legs. So try to keep it at 1,000 or 2048 if you have a really good decal or something. Anyways, I'm just using 1,024 for this reference. So let's go back to Object Builder. So we got our empty car we just imported from um, Maya. Now, if you import a model from somewhere else, it'll probably be backwards. So you hold Control in Object Builder and just drag it in there. And you can hold Control, Alt, and Shift to shrink it down and move it into place. See, I have X, Y constraints on where it can just freedom of move, but you can pick whatever you want. And then these, if these aren't showing for you, just go here, go to Window, go Editor, Toolbar, and you can drag these wherever you want. And if you want them there, you, whatever. It's, it's up to you. So anyway, let's go back to this. So I now rotate this. It looks dark. That's not correct. So all we got to do is hit F5 on our keyboard, and it reverses our face. And you're probably like, what's a face? Well, a face is this. These are faces. Now, you're probably like, well, um, you know, how do I know which way the face is going? Bohemian Interactive made it pretty easy. See these? Well, not that easy. I mean, they could have made them bigger. See these? These are faces, which way they're going. The blue lines mean they're facing out. If I hit W, it'll make it go face in. So when you look at this, you're going to be like, well, that's not doing anything. Well, let's hit it here and see. Well, this is because we did an inside view. Let me take off the inside view. Go to projected. Oops. Sorry, <laughs> you have to select. Make sure you highlight the window you're working in. I'm used to Maya and stuff, so sometimes when I come in here, I'm like, oh, hey, I'm just selecting, going nuts. So I'm going to turn on, turn on my shading mode. I'm going to select this inner object, which I probably can't now because it's probably so embedded in this one that it's going to be physically impossible to select this. There we go. Okay, so now we got it. Amazing. Okay, so we're back to our way you can see through. So if I hit W, see that? It switches the face around. So now 
If we're in the inside view, the faces are facing us, or if we hit a W again, now they're facing out. So that's how you switch faces, and you look for that blue line. Anyways, going back, let's go to left view. Then you go to view, go left view, and then use your mouse wheel to scroll out. Okay, now let's select a face. Go here. Actually, let's uh, select object mode right here. Select the object, apply your texture to it, and we have our texture, which is our TGA we created. So I'm going to go to texture. And it's good, to, if you see this, to create organization inside your folder. Or you're just going to get lost. Okay, so we applied our texture. Now, if we look on our object builder, I mean our viewer, start and we look and voila, got a texture. Like, wait, that looks weird. Why is that? Because there's no UV settings. So let's go ahead and select a face. We'll just select this side of this car. Okay. Now we already have a texture selected, so let's just go to UV set, editor. Now these are UVs. These are UV unwrap. So how I'm moving around is hold alt and right click and scroll around. And then let's just say get object. Go to edit. Go to get select selection from object. And then what I'm going to do is make sure you have your projection left or this is going to look weird. I'll show you an example. So if I do this weird view and I go to my editor and I do a planar map, which is a proje projection, it's taken directly from my view. That's not going to be right. It needs to be a flat projection, meaning like you took a cam camera and you took a picture of something flat. You want it straight so it's not distorted. So let's go to our left view. And let's go back to um, our editor. And let's do a proje planar projection again. And there we go. Now you're like, well, what am I looking at? Well, first of all, let's go to filter. Let's go to by main texture, which are our only texture. And now, while it's selected, we can drag this around. Don't distort it too much or you're going to wreck the texture. Um, and we could go ahead and move this over. Remember, the bigger it is, the bigger the texture is, the better quality it will be. Right now, because this whole square, and like I said, you can use these other parts in this engine if you want to keep organized, and this will still work. Like, if I'll show you. I'll make one side on this and one side on that one, and it wouldn't matter. But this whole square is 1,024 by 1,024, so that's low quality. And, of course... That's what ARMA supports, 1024, 2048, 4096, and so on and so on. But don't be ridiculous or you're going to get lag. So once we have our UV coordinate set, we're just going to hit close, and then we're going to go back to our viewer. And then we're going to look, and there we go. So let me go ahead and do the other side now. So I'm just hitting Alt-Tab to close the viewer because the viewer is really annoying. Oops. The viewer is really annoying. Like, you can't get out of it. So the only way to get out of it is Alt-Tab, go back to the Object Builder, and bam. Okay. So let's go to View. Let's go to Right View. And just go ahead and select these. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I go to Surface, because I already have a texture applied. Editor. I'm going to hold Alt, right-click. Let, let go Alt. And I'm going to do Edit. Get selection from object, planar mapping from my view. I'm going to go filter, police camo, and this time I'm just going to use this one. You're probably going to be like, well, that's not going to work. That's not in the same one. No, this is just a better way to be organized. If you have way too many parts, you can't see what's going on. It'll work just fine. So now let's go to our viewer, and there you go. Easy, right? Okay, now there's something else about these so we can we can go here we can right click rename or we can just yeah we're gonna have to rename sorry i'm thinking of the program and we'll just name it body this is the body and we're gonna hit e and there's also little things called rv mats and these are shaders 
I have Someone a shader lost connection that to I the gave server. you called Glass. So if we put it on there, it makes everything all shiny. So I'll teach you a little bit more about RV mats later. But for now, let's go to the file I gave you. So that's UVs and textures in a breakdown. Hopefully you understood that. So let's go back to our car. So we open our project file and you're probably like, well, you said there were textures on it and there's no textures on it. Well, these are set, not local. Local means on your computer so you can see it. But if you use a local file and if you get that, see I'm selecting the wheel. And it's a good way if you want to select a wheel and just see a wheel or something, bam, you can see it like that. But let's just deselect and go to object viewer. Now, you're probably like, well, I can see the police car texture, but I can't see the wheels. Well, that's because it's not set to global. Now, in other words, the wheels you would be able to see in-game, but you wouldn't be able to see the body texture. And you do this by going to mass texture, Material add in under tools and see how these are set to DHI police RV mat or texture. Here's the texture. That's the root folder. And that's just whatever you name it in your P drive. Make sure whatever you name it, it's Someone in the root moved folder. To this channel. You change the path to the root folder and that's the where the texture will be. Um, if you look at this now, these Someone are local. Moved out of this channel. If I if I go here and uh, I select the wheel, and we don't have a global texture on it right now, because if I select it, it's see it's global. Meaning, sorry, it's global right now. Meaning you won't be able to see an object builder. People will be able to see it in game, but when you're working on it, you won't be able to see it. So let's use my trick. Now, you should do it the proper way. Uh, I don't know if I want to show you the proper way. I like to make TGAs, double-click them, and then it says, oh, you cannot convert, and then it automatically makes it a PA. It's like cheating. Shh. And then if you look, there we go. Our wheels are showing now. So then if we look now, those wheels are showing. Let's go ahead and select these. And you don't have to keep hitting TGA. Once it creates the PA, you can just select PAA. So you get the point. These are now local. So if I want to change these back so that players can see them in game, then I would have to change the path right here to copy this DHI police and then hit rename. And there we go. Now it's set back to global. But I'm going to set these, you know, keep these um, local so we can see them. So let's let's break down this. What are we looking at? We're looking at parts. These are your parts. And everything you select is a part. And these are loads. L in the game, when making a game, there's different loads. So load one is closest view. So this means closest to the object. As you start increasing your number to like 20, this means farther away. So the farther away you get, the more you step away from it, the more it should look like this. Because you can't see detail from far away. So you should make steering wheels disappear, maybe light bar in the distance, whatever, whatever, whatever. But for this case, I just left it the same. I just took out the driver proxies. All right, so you got the first load whatever load and so how you make these is you just put your object in there and then it should make you load one anyhow but you can duplicate these right click properties and then you get all your different kind of loads pilot loads commander gunner rex whatever whatever in this case we're just doing a resolution load and that means how far away i'm not going to do that right now because i already got my 20 and my 100 i mean my one so now we have our next view called the cargo view. What is the cargo view? Well, this is the view of what the player sees in the inside. Sorry, I had some selected. So this is what the player will see in the inside. And of course, you're wondering, well, how come I can't see anything? Well, of course. If we look or we select our object, let's just select our camo. And you can 
change these to whatever you want by renaming them. And there you go. Uh, select it, check our faces are facing out, hit E, and then just go ahead and select PAA and select our object, hit OK, and there you go. Here's our texture. So this is what it'll look like in the inside. Not much, didn't put much detail, but I did on the dashboard. So if you select the dash here and you set these back to local, you can see the little speedometer like so. And I just did this as an example just to explain to you. So there you go. That's cargo view. Next is the shadow volume. This is just the, the shadow cast by the vehicle. No big deal. And you can resize this by holding Control Shift Alt, move it up and down, or you can go to vertex mode and select X, Y, Y is up and down, X, left and right, and then you Z, which you won't be able to see. It goes down and up. But anyways, play around with those. Get used to the keys. Remember, if you can't see this bar, it's probably hidden. Go to Windows. Go to Edit Toolbar. And if you don't like it there, you can just grab it, move it wherever you want. I got mine here. You want to move these tools around, grab them, move them wherever you want. Stack them, have fun, make your, your user interface the way you want it. Anyways, okay, so that's your shadow. And if you look in here, it's just a simple block. Remember, note to self, hit E and make sure there's no texture on it. Can't be textures on shadow, geometry, or physical. No textures, remember, it'll break the engine. Okay, or it'll break your armor. <laughs> In other words, PBO won't work. Okay, so that's our shadow volume. That's basically the shadow. Uh, this is our geometry layer. So what makes this special is this is just a closed object I modeled. And, uh, of course, my thing's freaking out. Uh, when you import this in from your 3D program, or you can go to Create, Box, I know you can add segments to it. Voila, voila, la, la. Then you can make it bigger and you can. I don't Someone know, moved can to this channel. Go into your little vertex tool and you can play around with these and move it around. Should have put one more vertex. Someone lost shape. connection to the server. And uh, this is this is um. You know your geometry, so. But if you left it the way this is right now, it wouldn't work. People would walk through this vehicle. So it would be sitting on the ground, but it would be a ghost. Why? Because there's no mass. And if you don't see this, the mass is right here. Uh, you could also have a selection, don't change total mass, if you want specific weights to specific tires when you start getting into physics. I don't know. That's long, drawn out, and we're not going to cover that. Um, so let's get back to this. So let's add 100. Now, now that we add 100, now if we put this on geometry, a player can't walk through this. And that's basically how you do it. Now, I took these from the Arma 3 samples. Like if you go to Steam Workshop, uh, I mean, your tools, and you go here, you have, if you go under your Click on the Arma 3 tools. They give you samples with your tools. And then you'll get like a little folder and yada, yada, yada. Let's see, Steam. And you're going to go Steam Apps, Common, Arma 3 tools. And then you're going to get like, um, oops, sorry, samples. And you're going to get your add-ons and you're going to get like a car. You're going to be like, oh, this is awesome. So I'm going to open with the object builder. And they give you how to build the car and stuff, just like I'm doing this. Up. See, this is where I got the geometry for the tires from. Well, not really. I made those tires, but the weights. Cause I still, I'm still learning the physics, physics and stuff. My cars drive pretty well and stuff. And if you're probably looking, well, you're just building this police car. 
Wrong-o. Uh, I've been making stuff for the community for quite some time, and I can show you more advanced stuff like this and, you know, how everything works and stuff. But, you know, I'm not here to show you that. I'm just here to, you know, explain how to do it in simple form. So you can grab those from Arma 3 uh, samples. So this is the geometry layer. Make sure all this has mass, even these. Now, so to create that, all you got to do is right click, new, blah, 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 properties, and then select geometry. Now this is very important. The geometry layer needs to have mass. Or you'll walk through. It'll still work, but players will walk through it. If it has mass, this is where the player is going to bump into. They won't be able to get by this vehicle or get into it. Okay, another important note. Next, create a geometry physics layer. And once again, hit new, properties, um, geometry physics. Now, this is very important. Very, very important. Do not, and I'll, I'll repeat again, do not, unless you want to have a fun time catching your car bouncing around. It's... I mean, it's like launching rockets in space. You put it on the ground and Someone's it just bounces alias like crazy. Has been changed. Do not put any mass or weight on this object. And you can basically do this by copying this one, going, hey, I'm going to take this. Hit control, uh, control C. Control Z is to backspace if you make a mistake, by the way. Um, take this, put this, and then just see these little brackets? This means it has weight. We're going to get rid of that. It has no more weight. So this is going to be the actual geometry of the vehicle. So remember, geometry, weights, geometry physics, which makes no sense, no weight. If you have weight, it's going to bounce around. Next is your memory load. Memory load are the points that tie into the config file. So let me show you the mirrors. This is PIP1 which is a side view mirror. And I know it's kind of hard to see. If it's hard to see and you're like, well, I can't see, then I'm going to show you what you can do. You can go to edit, uh, oops, sorry, file options. I don't know if you're on a Mac. I really don't. <sighs> sorry if you're on a Mac. Uh, mm, I don't work on Mac. I'm going to hit black. And then you're going to be like, well, that didn't work. No, yes, it did. Just got to reset your views and bam. So you won't be able to see your memory load. So that's how you change the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go to my background color. And I'm going to change this to a dark gray so I can still see my dots. And I'm going to change my view. And there we go. So these are little dots, aim points, whatever. And I'll explain what these do. So this is pip0 and pip. I mean PIP0 directory and PIP1 directory. See these? These are, these are I mean, PIP0 directory and PIP positive directory. These are your side view mirrors. And if you can see that in this view, if I go to projection, you can see. And remember, I'm just holding Alt and holding the right mouse button to rotate. And I'm going to select that again, and you'll see it right there. You barely can see it right there. So these are your PIPs. So you probably wonder, well, how do I know what this is? Okay, let me close all this. No, 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 no. Okay, so basically what you got in your folder is you got this. You're going to open your config. Let me break down the config file for you. So keep that on the back burner of that pip. Up top, this is a command that they give you in Arma 3 tools. Uh, it's, a, it's a script. And this is how you include script. So you, if you have pogo stick script or whatever that you want to embed and somehow tie it into, you can do that. But you can't do it through events like light bar, flash, and direction. I'll teach you that a little later. So here we have a basic definition. Now, if you look back in our Steam, we go to Arma 3 tools, like so. And we go, hey, Arma 3 tools are awesome. No, no, no. Arma samples. And we go to add-ons. You'll look and see they give you all this. The only thing I didn't 
put in there was the HUD. I mean, you could put in HUD if you want. If you open it up, it's just as simple as, hey, Someone this is your HUD, to this here's your clock, blah, blah, blah. I don't have HUDs in any of my cars because it's just annoying, but so on and so on. Anyways, so that's that. So if you want to include something like a sound file, which I have externally as well, you can include it. This, this should be the same. This is where your events start. This is your class. This is your group. So you can name this whatever you want. In this case, I have a civilian vehicle. And this is what it's going to be called in the group name. You can call it, you know, whatever, my group. But if you do that, make sure on your base model, that's what this is, see? Off-road base. And you can put whatever off-road, whatever vehicle you want in Arma 3. I'm just picking off-road here. Uh, this is car app. You can pick heli helicopter, building a helicopter. That's it's all different ball game. Um, all you got to do is copy this, name your base, whatever you want, underscore base, with C off road, then put your base here, which is your your basic base, which you're going to call this classification of this model file, and then make a new base name which you're going to make for your specialized models. I know that's a little confusing. Look at it yourself. Um, you'll see that this is just that and this is actual just the name for this. The starting base of your car. And make sure when you create another model, a specialized model, which is this right here, the test police car, that you have your base in there will not work. All right, so let's go down to the script. This is the patches. This is, you can type funny stuff here. Uh, requires, I don't know. And then the people will actually see that <laughs> when you post up a thing, but this is automatic. You will not see this as a default, but you can type whatever you want, make it funny. I, I, I made Knight Rider before and I put requires Michael Knight. So, anyways, um, this is your horn. Um, I'm sorry, not your horn, your uh, siren, because we're making a police car. So, this is the path to where your siren is. And uh, basically, you just create a regular MP3 sound. Go in your sounds folder and bam, there you go. <coughs> Oops, sorry, siren. <coughs> so that's siren. And then just put your path, and you can name it whatever you want. Um, your name, siren. You can name whatever you want. You don't have to put siren. But if you go to your open, and you go to your scripts, you go to sirens, and you'll see how this works later. Um, see, I put display your name siren. This has to match this, or it will not work. Okay? Moving on, we have our weapons, which is our horn. This has a double horn. Of course, it's the same thing like above. This is the reload time, though. This means <coughs> public scope. So, uh, yeah, make sure you set it to two or it won't be public. Someone no moved one to this to channel. Next, we got our CFG class. This tells it's a land vehicle, car, yada, yada, yada. It has turrets, has hit points. Hit points are basically this right here, part of your file. Like if you select engine, this is basically where the player shoots and activates damage in the engine. That's all a hit point is. Uh, view optics, this is standard. Hit points, there you go. Our events, our animation sources. Um, once again, this is our base class, off-road base, C car. Just leave this all intact. All you got to do is remember, if you want it customized to you, you can change this or change this to whatever you want to make sure it matches this. And then whatever model you create matches the same name here. Okay? And if you have any questions, 
comments, whatever, go ahead and leave them below. Okay, this is, this is, a lot of people don't know what this is. This is the, okay, so this is your, um, let me see if I can remember, uh, X, Y, Z. Uh, so that's left and right view, up, down, and how far away. So this means you're going to see behind the car. So if you can't see behind the car very clear, all you got to do is adjust this, father out, and bam, you got it. You want it closer up. Maybe you want it positive in front of the car, negative one behind the car, so on, so on. But this is the view in your third person of what you see. So let's just put this back to the way it was. Um, next is your animation. This is basic default. Arma tells it the hands animate on, and this is the selection. So what is this? this is if you look on your car, go back to load one. Let me delete this because you, you technically can build it just like this with one load. But, you know, you might want to try to practice real game techniques where you create other loads that lose geometry. Anyways, this is your drive wheel. Right there, see? Little steering wheel. And so that's all that's calling, saying animate left hand, animate right. This is your map size, basically uh, how big um, your little icon would be. Just leave it. It's set. I mean, you can play around with the numbers more. Anything you want. Sorry. <coughs> Didn't mean yawn. Um, next is our model file. This is our base root directory. And this is what we're going to call the model. So when we save it out, save as P3D, blah, blah, blah. So that's pretty simple, right? Self-explanatory. Author, me. You can change it to whatever you want. I don't mind. Go ahead, redistribute this, name it whatever you want. You name it, call it yours. I don't care. I'm trying to share knowledge in the world. Now, this is very important. It's called vehicle class. Remember, this has to be the same as this. This is your vehicle group. Now, this is your actual unit, what you're calling it in-game. So if it's called blah, 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 and then you have DH police, but then you have an ambulance in here, you just put AM or whatever, and then bam, you got more units. So remember, the more units you add, the more you want to put in here. I didn't put the example in there, but you know I was going to tell you in this YouTube video anyhow, so there you go. This just means class library. I just put it in there so that it shows up in game. It's not much to it, just double bracket. Weapons, once again, I told you horn. This is the weapon, C, horn, sports car, sports car, horn, path. There you go. No big deal. Um, but if your horn's not working, it's probably because you have the same the wrong name. This is a hidden selection. Um, these are basically numbers represent each texture. So when you're making a light bar, and I'll explain that to you. Um, this is a uh, light one, light two. So let's make a light light up. So go left view. I already got light one, light two, but I'll delete them to show not, you know, making things happen out of magic. All right, so I've got my view, and believe me, that background's going to drive me nuts. So it's whatever background you want. I'm going to go back to my background. I'm going to put it back in white. And do a Someone lost someone to, the to this channel. And I'm going to go... Uh, back in here. Someone moved to this channel. And I'm going to select faces. And I'm going to do that by holding control. Someone moved out of this channel. And I'm going to select this, 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 and this, and this. And just like on this side. So these are your police lights. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to side view. Up here. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to set my Y axis. Y is up and down. Hold shift and make a duplicate of this. Okay, I missed the face, so let me go back by hitting Control Z. 
selecting that face and then hold shift hold right mouse button and move it up so there we go go back to our projective view and we got two lights so let's look at the mod uh, model viewer there you go two lights <coughs> sorry my voice was I don't know what's wrong okay um, so what we're gonna do is why you can't see the text is because it's set global so let's go ahead and remember to reset them from global to local just go like this and there you go now let's make them light up so to make them light up we use what they call an RV mat and I gave you an RV mat of a simple light and you can download a program called um, Arma 2 Arma 2 Material Editor. Oops. <laughs> ah, I'll get you every single time, I swear. Okay. Um, I think this is it right here. I'll put the comments. See, so if you go here, Material Editor, you can download it. And then when you open up your RV Mads, um, this is how you make lights light up, by the way, like the texture light up. Go to your RV mat, and this is a headlight right here called immersive lighting. And that's how you make lights light up at night. And you want to set them really high. This is red, blue, and green. So that's how you make colors, just shifting around these sliders. Um, but I set them really high because I want it to be super bright and I set it in white so it will kind of overlay and I could probably bring down the transparency so it shows more of the texture but I got it like straight defined solid so that it's easier to see for you but if you want your lights looking realistic you can bring down the opacity which is the to make it ghost to make it invisible slightly so that you can see through it um, then you can add ambient light in the day, but I just use a diffuse channel, which is just that texture uh, solid. So I just use 1111. And then once you do that, you can save it, and then you get some like this. So I'm going to add my RV mat, apply, and then you got it lighting up. See that? It's lighting up. So that's how you make light up textures. So I'm going to go back to my left view. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go to my front view. I'm going to select the one on the um, left and make it light one. Or you can make it whatever you want. So I'm going to make it light one. Because here, see? Light one. But this is the base model, so this won't matter. So let's go down through all this and go to our DHI police police car are specialized models so you can create a base model and what I mean by base model is let's say you create a van this is the regular van model you put the 3d file in there but then you can create a news van with like antennas and stuff you can put that 3d file down here and you have to change the class so you would call it DHA or your name TV van and up here it would just be your name van base makes sense I hope so anyway so we just put light one in see that light one so let's go back light one there we go and the way I did that is just select over it using our object tool which is right here and just go ahead and right click new selection and type light two and then you can also do this if you let's say you messed up and you made a new selection and you could call this just light for I'm just using an example and it selects nothing when you drag over you can just here click it and hit refine now when you hit light where did it go light see that it'll show up but I'm not using that so I'm just what I'm doing is dragging over new selection and rename it. So you can do it two ways. So now that I have that name, light one, light two. Let's drag them into position. And there we go. So now if we go back to our viewer, they're in position. Now don't worry about the transparency thing. If you're having some 
face is going through, you can always go here and select where your object, like dragging over and holding Control Alt Shift, and just make them slightly bigger. And there you go. That gets rid of that blinking face problem. Okay, so now you have your lights. So you're saying, well, well, how does it work? Well, once again, I'm going to tell you. <coughs> so here you have, let's go back just a little. These are your headlights of your car. All right? These are controlled by just points. And you can put in the selection if you want. You don't have to put in the selection, but if you want it to light up, more power to you. Put in the selection, make it light up. In this case, I did. There you go. So the textures come on. I kind of messed up there. So the right is selecting both. So I'm just going to hold Control, Shift, Alt to deselect. And I'm just going to redefine. And now we fix that error. See that? So there you go. That was a good troubleshooting thing. So these are headlights. And these can be found here. So if we go in our memory loan, we go to the top view, we'll see headlight one, headlight one end. Now, once again, I probably goofed up there. Yep, 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 yep. This is supposed to be, um, where do you be? There we go. Because that's the distance of the headlight. And of course, it's all screwed up this way as well if I go back into this view turn on my headlights are oh boy they're they're flying up in the middle of the world there but you know I built this really quick so that's your headlights basically so you got where it starts where it ends simple right so go one two one There you go. So one, two, and so on and so on. So there's your headlights. So that's what these are right here. See, it's calling light in one, two. So if you have an off-road truck, all you have to do is add more classes in there. So right now you got, it's calling light one. See that? Light one, light one, rear light. Um, all you have to do is add a new class, call it light car head three, and then light car head one. And you can add off road lights. So make sure you add light car head R or light car head zero one. Add light car head zero three in this by just going bracket and then type in whatever you know. So that's that. <coughs> so those are headlights. And these are the settings, these are the angles, meaning like if you had a triangle, the angle of how thin or how wide it reaches, outer angle, uh, how the radius is, um, your intensity, how bright it is, if it, you want it in a cone shape, meaning circle, cylinder in the front, and turns into a little triangle in the back, so you got a triangle and a cylinder. Um, and then you have your flare, which is the, uh, think of like the little ball of light that just, it's super bright when you look at it. That's a flare. And then right now it can't be seen in the daytime. But if you want your lights to be seen in the daytime, you can hit one and turn them on. And then you can increase that flare size too to whatever you want. So those are your headlights. All right. Now let's go Someone's to Someone's alias has been changed. These, this is your display model. Um, the display model is basically how you'll see it in games. So this, if you have a light server, this will be your class name. This has to match um, what you put in your shop and also it has to match what you put in your model config. So if you look here and I open my DHI model config and we scroll down, Bam, bam, bam. There you go. DHI police. And these are all your parts. Remember? Light one, light two, what I just created? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. 
So let's go back to this. So now this is your specialized monitor. Remember how I said DHI van, TV van, so DHI TV van or whatever van you want. This is this is your has to be your root. This will be a new P3. Remember it doesn't P3D file. It doesn't have to be the same as your regular file. Okay, this is your picture icon, and. Uh, uh, this just means what you'll see when you go over editor the little picture and uh, basically I have a PAA plugin but um, you can do this in GIMP and if you want Photoshop PAA plugin it's only below CS6 you can go to NVIDIA and you can go to PAA plugin And there you go. They're right there for you. Download. Oh, wow. They're supported by CS6 now. Amazing. Okay, so, and this is where you also create your normal maps, but I'm not covering this today. And there you go. You can get your PA plugin from the video. So, anyways, I got mine. So, when I open PAA, I'm going to hold my shift button in Photoshop and open my. PA. So this is what Armor runs off in texture. So we got our regular texture we created in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever. And I'll go my image size and it, it Armor goes by two. So it has to be 1024, which is low res, 2048, which is higher res, and 4096. Those are the res. But you can't do 512 or you'll break it. Or you can't go elongated textures. You're going to break it. It's going to go nuts. Um, but anyways, these for every texture you create, you have to create an alpha channel. Now, this is um, what I mean by this. So if I wanted to create, I don't know, I'm going to create 1024 by 1024. Okay, we got a screen, right? I'm going to create black. And I'm going to, I'm not here to teach Photoshop, so. I'm going to create this, and then I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to, oops. I'm going to go in. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. Go in here, and I'm going to tip my. That's going to drive me nuts. <laughs> I should have created a new layer. Oh boy, uh, doo, doo, doo. long day, long day. Okay, let me go back, create my background layer, create my um, circle here, and I'm going to hold it on, doo, doo, doo. create it, create it, create it, on a new layer, bam. Now I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to shrink it in, like so, select it. I'm going to hit the base one, and I'm going to make a ring. I'm going to mesh those together. So, we got a ring. You know what? For giggles, I'm just put a little dot. I bet you don't know what I'm making. Yeah, a reticle. So, if you were making a reticle for a site, awesome. Didn't put it on the same layer. I mean, a different layer, so I can't move it out. There we go. All right. Warning, warning, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I'm moving this in place, right? So you're like, well, what's this? This is a reticle. So this is a reticle for a site. So, <sighs> red dot, except mine's a green dot. So what I would do is, this is an object, see, a separate object. So if you look, it's just a, this is transparency. And I'm not here to teach you Photoshop. There's plenty of tutorials online. You can look them up and learn Photoshop. So anyways, all I did is this. I created this reticle and I'm going to go to my channels and you see I have black. Black in an alpha channel means off in the engine. So to make this reticle, this right here, if I go back to my regular channel, show up in game, I would go into my channels and I would create alpha channel and I would just put white now when I go back and look in game it'll be 
my alpha channel and I'll see you'll see how this is so what I'll do is now I'll take out this background I don't want it and I'm gonna save this I load my B drive oops and I'm gonna go to my texture I'm gonna name it a TGA and I'm just gonna call it example right okay 32 bit yada 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 I'm gonna go back in my object builder I'm gonna go create a plane on the create plane and I'm gonna hit E on my keyboard to open text or texture sorry texture and I'm gonna find my TGA file reticle I'm gonna pull up example and I'm gonna look in my viewer and there you go look at that but it's not lighting up so what I would do is I would just take my RV mat go to RV mat go to headlight because that's the one that I have the remember inside I have the immersive lighting and I'll show you that again um, if you go here go to RV mat go to headlight immersive see it's immersive and you can make it ambient too so if I want this ambient I have this tied into diffuse so this will make it in this case I'm gonna make it bright green and I'm gonna sit there and save this as example okay and it's gonna say wish to save yes so there we got our example Um, now I'm going to go into this, I'm going to hit apply, and now if you look on our viewer, see we now we have a cool light up reticle that you can only see from one side. So, there you go, cool, cool, cool beans. Okay, anyways, you get the point of that. Okay, so now that you know that, that's how I made the picture icon. So, you do the same thing with the picture icon. And I gave you a little hint how to carry a weapon site. All right. Once again, you have to put scope public. Um, this is your horns. And remember, these are, like I said, above. Um, name it whatever you want. Horn 1, horn 1, horn 1. Make sure you change your base. Horn 1. And then you go back to your regular model, which is your Pacific model. Remember, DHI, TV or uh, DHI van base and this is DHI van TV van so I would just name this horn one and there you go that's where that is this is the type of driver that goes in it this is a C-Man 1 and you can find these if you go to like uh, Arma 3 config oops config CFG And then you got all your config. Um, oops. What am I doing? Uh, not config. Arma 3 class. Classes. Configure web master classes. CFG web master. Yeah, this is it. It's under here. There you go. So basically, all I used is civilian. I scroll down to the list of huge stuff um, I'm not on the, the fraction civilians am I nope all right so let's go to civilian and there you go you got C1 man so there you go C man one right there see and you can change it to whatever you want so if you want to spawn in with the all kinds of cool 